at the door. Look at the door. Oh no. Hey, you know what time it is? <laughs> you know what it is? Hello. You know who I am. You know who we be. <laughs> hey, Courtney. Hey, Courtney. Hey, Courtney. 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 I don't understand that. Just say it. You can what? Three. Okay. Who's number three? I think I I put it in three days. There you go. Can you hear me now? Yeah. You can't hear me? Can you hear the music? No. <laughs> now, whose song is that? Why do I hear a podcast it's good, it's good. in here? Hmm? Turn your volume down, please. Thank you. Oh. Hey, can you guys hear us? Man, we got a whole bunch of people joining. Who is that? So, Courtney, hey! We got Cubelio with Amor de Yay! Hey, hey, hey! Hopefully, you can hear us. And then there's Thurston. Go ahead and accept him. I'm so excited. <laughs> joining waiting i know he's in a park guys because he's having a great day that someone has something to celebrate mm-hmm. pew, pew, pew. it's like 96 degrees here today wow in dc yeah so if you're out there protesting hydrate yeah make please sure you hydrate and take a sweat rag with you hey oh can you hear us let's try this again can you hear us? I can there hear you. you hear me? There we go. There we go. Sorry, guys. Yay! Sorry about that. And look at you. In, in, no worries. Look at you enjoying this beautiful thing called fresh air. <laughs> mm-hmm. I, uh, listen, well, thank you for is, joining us. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Well, mm-hmm. I mean, I'm just going to throw it out there. Today's a day to celebrate. It's a lot of losses this month, but we got to win today. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Let's run it down. Let's run it down. What happened? Right, right. Do you want to tell us? Do you want to tell us? Uh, Yeah. I mean, listen, it, it was definitely a joyous occasion yesterday. We were awarded 90 points. So, uh, yeah, I'm very happy about that. <laughs> Yes! Mm. Congratulations! <laughs> Strong work. Strong work. Right, take a sip. Yeah, you got to. <laughs> you got to. <laughs> no, I mean, Cheers to you. Mm-hmm. But honestly, for the industry, I think it validates for many in the industry the wine and the project and also inspires others to let us know that we as you know, minorities can definitely create brands that are recognized and awarded and all that good stuff. So beyond me, I'm just happy that it happened when it happened. Because Yay. now you open it up. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's, a, right. it's a great day. I just feel like it's Jordan and uh, 96 right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's the first one. I definitely laid down right. and cried with the ball. <laughs> you, you had the flu and Pippin yeah. was like right there with you. <laughs> exactly. Wow, exactly. we have a lot of people joining. I know they're all excited to hear more and to learn more about your rosé. And I know, like, having that rating come out, you know, yeah. all of these things. So, just want to like open it up for you to tell your story and even how you created La Fete du Rosé. Yeah, yeah I mean, you like how I, mean, I said it. <laughs> yeah, you try to jazz it up, put your little accent on like Tarjay. I like that. Right, Tarjay. <laughs> <laughs> um, listen, for me, I think it's first of all, I have partners and, and I've been blessed to be the face of the brand, but it hasn't been me alone. I have a lot of partners in the background, a lot, but a couple of partners in the background that have all helped to make this brand what it is today. Um, but so I want to applaud them as well, because this is all of our award and recognition. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's just working in the industry for so long, all of us seeing the industry as a whole, we just really realized there was a void. And more important, which I really want to talk about now is there was no representation in the alcohol business, specifically with Rose Wine for economic empowerment, right? So that's really what this, yep. in addition to being left out of the conversation from a marketing segment standpoint, there's also the conversation of the economic portion of it, right? So for yep. us, we were tackling two birds with one stone, one going after a growing segment in the marketplace, and then number two, like how do we get our share of the wine and spirits business, the industry as a whole? Um, so we all came together and you know, the rose opportunity just fell in our lap because of where we were and travels and meeting the winery owner, et cetera. Uh, so that's how Lafette was born. But 
you know, it was really a greater cause. And I think that, you know, it just all happened as it should. You know, synchronicity is a real thing. You put things out yes. in the universe mm-hmm. to say, I want to own a brand. And then we meet that guy and then the ball starts rolling. And it, so it, it wasn't me alone. And it, I, do, I believe wholeheartedly it was divine destiny for sure. Yes, yes. So mm-hmm. I, I know uh, Bartender Ben has a few questions, but, you know, okay. I, I just I have a few myself. So yeah. what would you say would be like the hardest road that you think you faced to this point in creating this brand and this rosé? Um, I think honestly, you know, the easiest part was really the, the relationship with the winery and getting the brand started and the labeling. The hardest part has been distribution. I think, um, you know, we need to address that as a, as a people when we talk about this economic empowerment of minorities right now, that the distribution network is controlled by, you know, a couple of big players in the industry, uh, a couple of big, you know, white owned companies, and we don't really get our chance to win. They control the shelf space. They control the relationships with these big yep. box retailers. They control all of that. So what I call the gatekeepers has been the biggest hurdle, the biggest struggle is to one to convince the gatekeeper to give us the opportunity and the chance. And then they have to sell it on to the next level. The three tier system in America with alcohol is completely effed up uh, in all honesty, yeah. because we can't go sell direct. So you're reliant on those distributor gatekeepers to even bring your brand in and then to go out and actually sell it. So that's been the toughest part. Um, luckily, I had some relationships in the industry, but even still then, do I get the uh, priority the I should have or the red carpet? Yeah. By no means. And even now, like calling people up now, like, hey, we have this hot brand. And they're like, yeah, we don't need any more rosés. Okay. Why? Mm-hmm. You have um, 70 other brands, but you don't need this one brand. Like, so it's, it's super right. hard. So the distribution network for all of us in this space uh, is extremely difficult. So we need to start putting pressure on distributors and the gatekeepers to give us our fair share. And not even give us, it's to give us the opportunity to prove ourselves in this Yeah, industry. just like anyone else. Just yeah, like 100%. anyone else. 100%. That's all it is about. We just want to be treated the yep. same way as you treat the others. Exactly. <laughs> right. Yeah, because listen, Gallo can start a brand tomorrow, roll it out, and just because it's Gallo, they'll pick it up everywhere in every big box store and every distributor, and now it's a priority. It may not even be good, but it's Gallo. So where, where's the same opportunity for the small brands? Yeah, yeah. And to be honest, how do you become a bigger brand, Big brand. If, if you're not able given those opportunities? Like, it doesn't Absolutely. make any sense. Absolutely. And I think now more than ever, especially, like, with all that's happening with COVID and the protests and all of these things, you know, seeing the black small business owner and the need we need yep. for grants, not loans, to help yep. us sustain during this time, um, is a bigger cause that we all need to be fighting for. 100%. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. All right. I know you got a couple questions. <laughs> well, me on the business side, like, how did you start up? You know, um, I know you say you started with partners, but like, um, and actually building the business, mm-hmm. entering into the wine space. Like, one, how did you get inspired to get into it? Um, once you got into it, how did you start? Yeah. If you uh, start there, that would be great. Listen, I, I had already worked in the wine spirit space uh, for about 15 years, uh, 10 mm-hmm. years at LVMH for Moore Hennessy USA, working across the entire portfolio, and then in another couple of years uh, at Champagne Armand de Brignac, a.k.a. Ace of Spades. So that was my training ground um, where I learned the ins and outs of the business. So I think that gave me a bit of an advantage, so to speak, not saying it made it easier, but I had the knowledge of how the system worked, the three-tier system worked, and more importantly, the relationships um, so once I made the connection with the winery and we all sat down and decided we want to do this, myself and my partners were able to call on the relationships we had in the market from our previous work experience in the beverage industry to kind of, you know, tug at the strings and say, hey, when I was leading right. this brand, I took care of you on this. Will you help me uh, make this happen? And I put up a post on Instagram some time ago about loyalty in the industry. And the very first people to say yes were the food and beverage directors so to speak at the w hotel south beach and they literally said you've always taken care of us when you were with the big brand so the onus is on us to say yes now and i think you know relationship Mm -hmm. building and knowing the industry really helped so i mean again like i said everything has been divine manifestation so to speak like i didn't really plan any of this um but i did have 15 years experience in the wine spirit space working on champagnes tennessee cognac belvedere uh, et cetera. So that gave me the knowledge of the industry. Um, but then a lot of it was just taking a risk. I don't think about it knowing what I know now, would I have really launched a brand. So I kind of went in blind, <laughs> blindly. So I, I can't say I'm the expert on that, but it was just knowing that I wanted to change the conversation and, you know, take a piece of the pie. Because when you look at some of these larger companies, 
I mean, Moa Hennessy, love them to death, best training ground in the world. They make so much money off of people of color. I mean, Hennessy alone mm-hmm. sold 8 million cases last year, 1.76 billion euro. Um, they should be giving $100,000 to the NAACP. They should or be giving United Negro College Fund. Right. All of that. Right. But what they really should be doing is making the pathway for small black businesses easier in the wine and spirit space. Yes. And that's the press mm-hmm. that I'm going to start putting on them with my voice because I know what happens in these meetings. We're not a part of the conversation, which, you know, any of that, like do strategic investment. The beauty space has been very good about that, of making strategic investments in small minority owned black brands to make them grow. We now need to put that same pressure on the wine and spirit uh, business as well. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, is there a way that we can do like a grassroots type of distribution? Like, is there a way we can go around the distributors and... Yeah, and it's called direct to consumer, which is why it's so important when people go to our mm-hmm. websites, all these different brands and buy, because if we can show success direct to consumer, that also right. leads into the brick and mortar retail, because then people are going into those stores and asking mm-hmm. for that brand. Um, there's a brand called Summer Water, which was a part of a wine box club started out of L.A., and they show so much success that they're now nationally in all of Whole Foods stores from being wow. direct to consumer. So if we can mm-hmm. take that same power and harness that as, you know, black owned brands. I mean, it's, it's unstoppable. I mean, I, I, it's funny. The other day, B. Simone, beauty influencer, Instagram, she has like 4 million followers. She said she did a million dollars in 30 days mm-hmm. with makeup. So if we could take that and do the same thing in the liquor industry, they can't tell you no at that point. We could all yeah. win. So yeah, yeah, direct consumer is the way to go. If we can help these brands grow from a direct consumer standpoint and show the sales data, it will make retailers and distributors say, hold on, how do I get my piece of that money? I don't want to lose it. Mm-hmm. I don't want to leave that mm-hmm. on the table. It's like iTunes to the music industry. Exactly. <laughs> you can cut out the record labels. That's what we got to do. We got to yeah. cut out the label, yeah. cut out the record yeah. distributors, and put it right in the record stores ourselves. Direct to consumer. Right. Because actually, it's, it's, it's a better customer experience sometimes, yeah. too. To have it directly brought to your house. You don't have to worry about it breaking while walking or yeah. carrying in the car. Mm-hmm. I mean, there are a lot of perks. And so, yeah. like, seeing, like, how yours come, you know, in the package, I felt like I was opening and, like, it's sung. Oh, when I opened <laughs> the package. Um, and you won't get that same feeling if, you know, you are able to go to the store and purchase. Yeah. But I, I packed it up myself, point. by the way. I packed that box oh. myself. No, I'm still well, kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> I was like, there was all kinds of beautiful aura. Yeah. <laughs> That's why those bottles went so quick. Okay, yeah, that exactly. makes sense. <laughs> and we also, we got a tag um, in the comments there so we can, you know, pin that. Yes, yeah. we're going to so pin where people you. can uh, get your rosé and yeah. following you and all of that. And using our code Rose Hour yeah. uh, to get a discount. Trust me, I used it. It is worth <laughs> it. And I used it several times. So do the same as well. It is so, so good, Rose. I loved it. Mm-hmm. I think you said it was one of your favorites as well. Yeah. yeah. It, it's it's really good. good. And I like it because it's strong. <laughs> the alcohol content <laughs> is very high, brother. So uh, strong work on that. You did a good job there. You know, you know, you know what's plus. interesting is it's only 12.5%, <laughs> but because it's so easy to drink, I tell people you drink it a lot faster, so it hits a lot faster. As they oh, say, yeah. it, it, hit, it hit different, right? <laughs> right, it do. I, I, I fell into that trap on air a few times. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, you, yeah. You, you had me slumped a couple times on here. Yeah. Bad look, but hey, strong work on that wine, brother. No, thank you, you so much. Job, I appreciate man. it. Thank you so much. Yes, yes. And someone just wrote, love the uh, strawberry note uh, <laughs> within it as well. So, yeah. Amor yeah. Geneve wrote that with his amazing blue wine as well. <laughs> oh, yeah. We're going to do a lot of things together, he and I. You know, red, white, and blue is coming up, so we're going to definitely do some do some things together and do some co-marketing, co-branding, because it's important, because I, I love his wine. I love the story, and, you know, we got to tell people that it's not something with blue dye in it and tell his story of how this, you know, chemical yes. engineer engineered this wine to be the color it is. I think it's amazing. Yes, and, you know, mm-hmm. if, if you're doing guys, if you guys are doing something national, of course, you yeah. have to come to the nation's capital. And we'll 100%. be more than happy to host you. <laughs> right. Definitely. <laughs> we'll be Definitely. happy to work with you and make it all possible. Um, I just have a couple more questions. I know you okay. do too, probably. Mm-hmm. Um, so with all this that's, that's happening in the world and, you know, mm-hmm. we're starting to see the hashtag Black Lives Matter like they didn't before. Mm-hmm. Um, how is that not only impacting sort of you and, and how you're moving in the space, but also your business? Yeah. Um, 
for me moving into space again, I, I posted it, didn't care about the black the, uh, backlash. I put it Black Lives Matter on our Instagram page as a brand, and I really didn't care what anyone had to say because it needed to be said. So for me, yeah. you know, I'm going to be very outspoken, always have been, but I want to make sure it just doesn't dissipate after they are arrested or the protests end. So that's why I'm pushing for the economic and uh, equality in our industry in terms of like getting our fair share of distribution, et cetera. So it's motivated me in that sense, because I truly do believe if we can galvanize from an economic standpoint, we can then rule from a political standpoint. Um, because that's where the power is. Uh, we can start to buy our politicians. We can start to do all the things that larger corporations and these uh, super PACs are doing. If we can do that, then our, then our uh, agendas will become part of the priority for each, each, uh, each Democrat or Republican. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, we appreciate this. And, and like, I guess this moment is, is telling to the need of small businesses of color, yeah. especially black business and how many black business owners there are in the world. And yes, in every industry we exist and more specifically, here are the industries we exist that you guys don't even pay us attention to. Yeah, so 100%. it's good to see all of that. And like you guys are getting tagged everywhere on every list. Yeah. So I know that's pretty amazing. And, 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 and kudos to the wine and spirits industry, because I think after they realized that, you know, they had not given us, you know, the exposure we need in the last two days and three days since this movement started, I have to say that they, the, the community of wine people have come together and really are showing, shining the light on all of us small brands out there. So kudos to them for reacting fast and swiftly. Uh, because so many other industries aren't saying anything or giving generic statements. So I applaud all of my friends. I thank everybody that's given all of us uh, the shine and reposted and, and drove their consumer base or awareness to our brand. So we really appreciate it. Yes, definitely. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, any more questions for you? It is more so a statement, man. It's yeah. good, it's good job. Thank Continue you. Continue doing what you're doing. However we can help you on this end, please let us know. You got our support a billion percent. Yes, Thank and you, we man. are all mm. for the black businesses. Right. And, of course, my favorite beverage, Jose. So <laughs> <laughs> we are here and all, you know, the support. Yeah. You know, we've been telling everybody in D.C. about this, everybody in Chicago, where I'm originally from, all about it. And, like, you know, we are trying to post it every week because we believe, you know, in the cause. And actually seeing black men in this space is so amazing and mm -hmm. rare. And so we applaud you. Your, no, thank your you, guys. I really appreciate it. And all. No, yes, thank you so thank much. You. I mean, because listen, you guys created the groundswell yourself, a lot of other entities that help get the brand and notoriety that it even has to date. So I thank all of you guys because you were early supporters, and without you guys, we wouldn't even made it a year. It's been a year now, so we wouldn't even be a year old without wow. you guys supporting. Wow! Congrats mm -hmm. on that. That is thank amazing. So yeah. Most companies don't make it a year. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> no, exactly. <Right. laughs> Look at y'all thriving and whatnot. <laughs> we're trying to fight. We're right. Trying. Right. So do you mind just telling people we're pinning it now, uh, yeah. but how they can uh, connect with you and make a purchase as well? Absolutely. So our website is www.lafetterose.com. That's L-A-F-E-T-E-R-O-S-E.com. Our Instagram is at Lafette Rose. Uh, my Instagram is Thurston Burson the Third, as you see. So feel free to drop us a line. You can buy. You can also go on our website and put in your zip code, and it'll tell you all the stores in your area uh, that potentially may sell Lafette Rose. Awesome. Well, I am just donate. I was just so thankful and uh, happy and everything for oh, you, you so today much. and every day. Thank you for being a, a beacon of light in the industry <laughs> and doing all you do. We really, really appreciate it. And we will continue to support. Yes. Thank you so much. And thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Take yes, care. Bye-bye. Bye, Bye, guys. All right. Yay. So, yeah. again, if you have not made a purchase yet, you see it here on the screen. It's right there. Go to LaFeteRose.com. Use our code ROSEHOUR uh, to get 15% off your first order. And you, if you buy, like, three bottles, it's $65. That's cheaper than going to the liquor store and getting three bottles. And it comes directly to your home. Right. So that's pretty dope. And it's strong. It's delicious. <clears throat> it's delicious. <throat> and if you're not following us here at the Rose Hour, definitely hit that like button. Follow us. Mm -hmm. We have lots of great programming, lots of great things. And actually, we're going to go to, uh, we have another person, because we're going to keep talking about small business today. Uh, we're going to go to the People CPA. There she is, the People CPA. Mm. There is an S. Okay, sorry. I, when I, the one I read, it didn't have one. Sorry. Four, so excited. Oh, Black CPA. 
keeping the support of our business. Hey, hey, hey. Hey. How are you guys so, doing? <laughs> we are great. We're great. Thank you for joining us. There's a little feedback, so you may want to turn your phone down just a little bit. Okay. Does it sound better now? It should. Yes. Yes. Okay. There we go. <laughs> Strong word. Yes. So I was like, oh, that's how I sound? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, hello, Queen. Thank you for joining us. No problem. Thank you for having me. Yes, yes, yes. So we heard about you from Amor Genese, Mr. Camelio Salinas, and he said that you are the most amazing CPA. And, you know, as we're, we're going through what we're going through in the country, uh, we wanted to dedicate this, this episode to black businesses, black strength, black unity, mm -hmm. all the amazingness about all the black uh, people that are doing great things in different yes. industries. And so, you know, talking to you is naturally a great fit for this moment. So we'd love for you to just kind of tell your story, who you are, and sort of like what you do. All right, perfect. So hello, everyone. I am Shanae Wilson, aka the People CPA. So make sure you follow me. Um, I, am a <laughs> I am a certified public accountant out in the state of New York. I've been a CPA for the past four years now. Um, I have a background in corporate. I was at a big four accounting firm, learned a lot there, um, but wanted to figure out how I can utilize my knowledge and finances to better impact my community. Hence the reason why I decided to start my business, Bola Financial, and the primary purpose of the business is to serve creatives, entrepreneurs, small business owners, primarily being of color. I see, especially over the past couple of years, there has been a huge increase in the amount of Black ownership, Black entrepreneurship. And most times, small businesses stay small because they lack a strong financial foundation in mm -hmm. understanding business acumen and understanding the importance of having a financial structure. So yeah. I pride myself in going to these businesses, teaching them, not only providing the service, but more so educating them so that they can know how to understand their finances and build a stronger business. Yay. Yay. Mm -hmm. So a CPA... <laughs> What, what type of schooling, for those who may not know, would one go through to become a CPA? Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. So um, I am like a overall accounting nerd. And um, so whenever I tell the education part, people are like, okay, I get why you're doing what you do. So I started <laughs> my education. <laughs> I was always good at math. Um, I ended up skipping a grade actually when I was in first grade because of math and went to third grade. So I'm actually only 25 years old. I've been in business for three years now. Um, I got my associate's degree in accounting from Mooresville State College, so for two years. After that, I went on to SUNY Oswego, obtained a bachelor's degree in accounting. After that, I stayed for one more year, did my MBA. Throughout my MBA program, I studied for my CPA exam, which is a four-part four process. And it took oh, wow. me about a year to pass that exam. Um, so currently, aside from me being a CPA and having my business, I'm also still currently in school studying for a PhD in accounting. Mm. Girl, yeah. mm. that's that black girl. Hit, hit all the buttons on there. Hit yeah. all of them. There's a hit black girl. Man, there's a floor button on there. There's an applause. <laughs> there's an applause. Yeah, all that in there. There's an applause. Hell yeah. So yes. That, yes. Come on, doctor. Right. Oh, hey. That got a nice <laughs> ring to it. Yes. So when do, you finish your program? <laughs> <laughs> when do you finish your program? So I finished the program in 2022. Um, I am okay. going into my third year now. I actually have my qualifying exams next week to continue my PhD studies. Um, and so hopefully I'll be done by spring of 2022. So um, a oh, more cool. generous accommodating. So aside from the business, the PhD. I thought um, he said also, something about your podcast. <laughs> yes. I also have a, a podcast with one of my business mentors. It's called the Financially Lit Podcast. We talk about all things finance, business, wealth building, everything that we as a community should know about how to attain and not only attain it, but sustain generational wealth. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. and, and do you mind uh, saying the name of the podcast again so we can add it in the comments? Yes. So it's the, finan the Financially Lit Podcast. Yes. The Financially, the financially Lit podcast all right we I'm actually lit all I mean, 2020 <laughs> yes 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 cool. lit. 
Duh. Be financially lit. Duh, it's me. <laughs> <laughs> it's a T-H-E, I think I was right? typing in. So I may be saying it wrong. Okay. No, I you're saying it's... it right. Oh, okay, great. The, yes. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, no, it's, somebody already has it in there. Don't worry about it. Okay, thank you. All right, perfect. Yeah. Shout thank out you. to whoever did that. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I'm like, no, the and the are the same words. It's like the Ohio State. <laughs> you know, like they're the only school that does that foolishness. Um, but the podcast though, I like that. Right. <laughs> Thank you. you know, to put Thank it. You. Thank you. Yes, yes. So if someone would like to acquire your, your you know, services, how can they reach out and con- contact you and also learn more about like, you know, how you can help them with their business and like do you do personal financial stuff too? So they want yes. to do personal uh financial uh work with you. Yes. So I do provide both personal and business financial coaching Um, through FOLA, my business, my main baby. I do provide tax services, bookkeeping services, especially during these times with COVID and understanding financing for your business. I do help with PPP loans. Um, So more so business, but I do personal finances and personal financial coaching as well. Also, for those of you who are super into building wealth, I'm also a real estate investor, so I do have three properties now. Um, so even if mm. you want to learn how to build wealth from that standpoint, in terms of acquiring properties and understanding equity, again, um, we can always have a financial coaching session for that. Man. Is I there think, anything you don't do? I know, right? Where's yeah. the cape? <laughs> right. Where's the cape? You got the cape on? I don't, I don't <laughs> ski. I don't ski. That's what I don't do. Listen, hey. you you fly. That's why. Right. <laughs> I mean, is there a way that we can do like a spinoff show where we can talk about business and finance here? Maybe and drink rose. Yeah, hey, maybe we'll we do it on about... like a, a, what, a Friday or Saturday, or Tuesday or something. I'm sure we can I'm work all together. Here for it. All here for yes. it. Yes. So well, we line that up. Yeah. <laughs> we yeah. Line that up. And and you do this all over the country. It's not just in New York, correct? Right, exactly. So I have clients in all 50 states, whether it's from New York to California. I have clients in Nebraska, Ohio, Arkansas. Um, So definitely, again, a CPA for the people and just having people understand that obtaining wealth is not it's not hard to do. It just takes education. It takes a team. And again, you guys have me as a resource. I'm always here to provide knowledge and to provide services. My friends are commenting. I'm just laughing at them. I see her. <laughs> she's like, I'm a client. Yeah, she's like, just right. for me. Right. Yes, girl. I love it. Thank you. Best accountant Thank ever. You. Hey, look, I'm about to uh, holler at her after this show, too. So. Right. Looks like you're sold to me. I'm here for it. <laughs> I'd rather have a black woman accountant anyway. So here we go. Oh, so well, one last, yes. <laughs> one last question. Um, mm-hmm. With everything that's happening right now, and I know you said like you're working with people in their PPP loans and all of that, you know, like Congress just passed another, you know, bill yesterday about like some technical fixes and some changes like to it's up to 16 weeks instead of eight weeks. All of those little nuances and things. Um, what else can people do or connect with you as we're having all this impact, not only from COVID, but the protests as well? Um, I know like small business owners who um, have to deal with corporate liability issues now um, with not having PPE as well as uh, people who unfortunately have to have people come back, but their business unfortunately gets uh, harmed during some of the protests. So like, how can you help and, and talk with those people about like this current unprecedented time? All right, so I guess I can answer that from two different perspectives. One thing is about taking a preventative mes- mes- method and then the other side is being able to be reactive, right? Um, none yeah. of us plan for COVID, none of us plan for these riots, the looting, but you did plan to be in business, right? And when you Mm. have a business, it's important for you to make sure you are taking precautionary measures to protect yourself during this time. I did a live a couple weeks ago and I asked business owners if they had business insurance for their storefront. Many of them Mm -hmm. don't. And again, Mm. if you're working with a financial expert on your team, this is one of the things that we bring up. It's important to have insurance for things like this. Had it not been COVID, what if it was another hurricane? What yes. if it was an earthquake, mm-hmm. you know? Um, so it's right. about being, being proactive and taking precautionary measures. 
On the contrary, yeah. once things happen already and, you know, they hit the fan, it's about how do we now pivot and maneuver. I feel like during this time, it showed you who's really equipped to be an entrepreneur and who's not, right? Mm. Being an entrepreneur is not just about starting your business. It's about being able to not only take risks, but manage that risk. And again, pivot mm -hmm. to benefit, your, benefit yourself. Yeah. So as a result of COVID, as a result of these riots, what can you do to put yourself in a better position? Whether that is applying for funding, applying for loans, there's a bunch of banks that are now offering new programs, new products mm -hmm. specifically for these causes. And again, at, we claim the title CEO all the time, chief executive officer. So it's up to you to be able to execute no matter the circumstance. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. Right. Yes. Right. You got to get, you got to yes. be ready so you don't have to hit, get hit ready. Some buttons on yes. there. Do this. Be ready. <laughs> you you have to be ready so you don't have to get ready. I love that. Right. I love that. People don't understand that CEO is a title. It's not just you the boss. You got actually, exactly. you, you got to do something. You got to do something. It means things something. To do. <laughs> right. Exactly. You got, you know, the title, you got to do something. You got to do something. You got to execute, right. Chief Let's Executive go. Officer. Yeah, that's that the job. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. Root word. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Right. So, I, 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 we could talk to you all day because I'm <laughs> a, a lobbyist for small business. He's a small business owner. So, we can literally sit here all day with you. So I, I will not <laughs> bore you with more questions, but I do want to make sure that people are able to connect with you. Um, I know we're going to connect with you afterwards too, but if you don't mind dropping your uh, contact information, your Insta, uh, your podcast and all that so people can follow you. Um, and then we're going to just make sure we uplift that too after this episode so we'll be in touch because <laughs> for small businesses there's a lot happening and especially in the black community and small yeah. business um we will be extinct if we don't take as you say precautionary measures and exactly. plan um because that's what sort of what they want us to do right now exactly. and if we actually look at the reality it's really happening so oh wait is that a question if you're on this live and the people cpa is not <laughs> your accountant you filled with the wrong person. Okay, <laughs> then don't make that mistake again. I, hey, I dig that. Thank you, right. DJ. Hey, yeah. I dig that. I mean, right. Looks like I know who I gotta follow with next year. Yep. I'm gonna get my <laughs> life right. Right. It's like the church. I'm gonna get ready for the day. You know, I have one question, right? Mm -hmm. I started with TurboTax. I did the whole QuickBooks thing, self-employed. You know. All right. Do you recommend that? So, all right. I, I love the pause. I love <laughs> right, the pause. right, right. I get this question so, so, so much. And um, this is my honest opinion, right? Utilizing software such as QuickBooks and TurboTax, when your returns are pretty simple, so say you just have one or two W-2s, that's fine. What you don't want to do is begin to accumulate wealth and complicate your tax situation, your tax profile, and depend on an algorithm to tell you what your tax liability should be. Yes. Especially when you are That's a true. business owner. And so many times, business owners come to me and they tell me, oh, I filed a Schedule C on TurboTax. I'm paying back $10,000. I don't know why. I'm like, did TurboTax sit down with you and ask you questions about your operations last year? Did they ask you what you spend money on? Did they help you organize your books, break down to you your profit and loss statement for 2019? No, they didn't. Mm -hmm. Again, because it's an algorithm, right. right? So as you grow, especially, again, those of us who are on a journey of accumulating wealth, you do want to have a financial expert on your team. We talked yes. about CEOs. We talk about executive suite. We talk about COOs. Every time we hear the breakdown of what a C-suite is and who's on that C-suite team, let's not forget there's always a CFO, right? Yes! Mm -hmm. Yes! Yes. That's what the F stand for? Chief what does Financial the F stand for? Officer. Oh my God, she broke it down. She didn't broke it down. And I see your homegirl in the comments getting on me talking about TurboTax. I asked this question for the people. <laughs> 
Let's he get on me about a, that. He used Turbo Tax. I did. But, I told oh you I used Turbo Tax. I didn't know. I didn't know you <laughs> before I used it. But now, well, but you now, know I know now. You. Right. right. We ain't going to use when it no more. When you know better, <laughs> you do better. And right. next year, we going to be better. What? And we ain't going to exactly. be sorry. We yeah. going to be careful. That's right. Don't do be sorry. Right be right careful. Way. And so exactly. we will be. <laughs> drink to well, that. I'm to drink to join you guys. Man, you uh, got to come prepared next, next time. time. <laughs> I will. I didn't know. Let me know next time. Listen. If you tell me to have my cup. <laughs> we now we now have each other's contact if we'll go from there. <laughs> yes. <Right. laughs> well, thank you so much for joining mm-hmm. us. Again, pin your information or yes, uh put your information into the comments so that way we can make sure it keep posting and letting people know about the amazingness of you. And we'll be in touch tonight. Yes. <laughs> okay, <perfect>. yes. <laughs> thank yes, you for call. your time. Thank you all so yes. much. <laughs> you later. Later. You too. All you right. Too. Uh-oh, there goes the... Who oh, knows? no. The, everybody, we're swaying. <laughs> we're right, swag surfing. Here we go. We're swag surfing. So today has been great. If you guys are not following us already, mm-hmm. please follow us here at the Rosie Hour Podcast. You see, we have a great, great guest, and we're so thankful. So Amor Deneve connected us to the People CPA. So shout out to him. Um, mm-hmm. He's also here in the comments. So uh, if you're if you're available to talk, Mr. Uh, Amor Deneve, <laughs> which is Cavelio Salinas, let us know. Just go ahead and, and, and uh, put your hand up or something so we can bring you in so you can talk about uh, your amazing wine, too, because today it's all about black business. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm so happy that we're talking about black businesses. It's it's so amazing. Um, and we need to just make sure that we are are going to keep supporting them. And it's not just because of the protests and not because of a moment in time, um, but it's a reality of things. Right. Uh, if you, uh, Pisces, we can go to Mr. Amor Genese. Okay, that works again. All right, there we are. We're coming to you now, sir. Also, shout out to all the protesters out there. Hey! There you go. There hey! you go. What's going on, it's everybody? A, it's Mr. Blue Wine himself. Yes. Look at you. Looking like the sun is <laughs> beaming on you. <laughs> the last time you all seen it. <laughs> <laughs> You're staying safe, socially distancing then. I, it, it, uh-huh. Trees. Trees are around me. I'm, I'm enjoying nature. I'm breathing a lot of oxygen right now. You know me, the science guy. Uh, <laughs> nice. Yeah, we do. We do. So how are you and, and, and how are things are in New York right now? You know what? I'm uh I'm 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 elated. I'm happy. Um I'm grateful that that things are are looking in certain ways, right? The inside of things are looking up on certain occasions, but they're also looking down on certain occasions, right? Um as yeah. you know, I'm anthropic and very um philosophical as well when it comes down to the things that happen. And I think I think my main thing right right now I want to tell a lot of people is that awareness is key and moving in the direction of what it is that we are trying to do is key, right? Um, yes. And I and I tell this to a lot of the people in the industry now. Um, a lot of people sound like they're a little bit you know flustered and upset about everything that's going on inside of the wine industry, and that's kind of you know there's there's a give or take to it, right? Uh, I had a good with a gentleman in here, uh, his name is David. David knows that he's uh, he owns a brand called uh, Altaniva, and a uh, great guy, amazing soul. And uh, we had a great conversation yesterday, and it made a lot of sense. And I want to drop this nugget to everybody in here. He told me that realistically, in this industry, it's difficult for a lot of people, right? And for the simple fact that people look at you and look at your skin in a lot of the industries, that you are the only one in the industry, whether it be Asian, black, um, um, Indian, but specifically when you look at black people, we're looked at as just just um, insensitive and upset, right? So mm-hmm. how the media is portraying that, that, that ideology, but leaving out the main systemics of why it is that we're, 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 we're at, we're not at ease. So right. I'm my people I'm telling my I'm telling the people in the industry that I'm reaching out to and you know just the the United Psalm Foundation and you know Christy Norman that's a part of that and you know everybody else that's in the industry the influencers you know I'm explaining them I'm, I'm explaining to them and everybody else that you know it's bigger than just the, the, the conversation 
It's about the yeah. understanding. About the listening it's about the structure it's about bringing everybody in the room together to ask the questions um julia julia did an amazing julia conley the writer she did an amazing live that she did that broke down every single ideology of what it is that it is to be in these tasting rooms and to be in these wine shops to be these restaurateurs that have an issue developing these large um these large teams right uh, Cha Squared, she's out in um, she's out in uh, in Portugal by herself, and she's creating amazing things over there. So I say that to say this, right? We have to see those 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 similarities that we have, and be able to build <laughs> off of that, regardless of what our brand is, and regardless of what it is that we um we feel, right? A lot of people feel, yeah. and it's good to feel. Because it means that you still have a soul. It means you have a heart. It's good to feel. But having emotional intelligence and being able to balance that and have an understanding of what other people feel is the most important thing, right? That's how we're yeah. all going to win. Because there's more than enough space for everybody out here. Like, when you really look at the world and you look at these different spaces that we all want to be in, there's more than enough room. And if we do it in a unified way, come on, the systematics are known to be able to have everybody happy, Right? So yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yes, and and I know Martin have been. I know you got questions. I see the, the face hey. again, but I just want to say, like during this time, I want to thank all the people who are creating these lists about who to follow, who to purchase from for Black businesses, and like that's great, that's fine. Don't let this be a moment, right? And also right. with that, let us see a change in your own company with your board structure. Mm. with your leadership structure, with your wage structure, because we're always, all communities of color are paid less, you know, especially women, right? The wage gap is huge. And so while we're doing this in the industry, we need to make sure that you guys are also paid equally to in the industry, um, you know, from servers to line cooks to restaurant owners um, who are getting APR rates that are skyrocketed higher than, you know, white counterparts. Um, getting loans that they shouldn't have and versus a grant. So we should just make sure that we continue to press on people that like the reason red line worked was because you guys allowed it. Correct. Don't allow it anymore. Correct. Correct. And you know, um, and it's great that you say that and, and go ahead, Ben, I, I want you to uh, put some two cents in there as well. I know you being in the field of bartending, yeah. you probably see it all the time. Oh, he's not a real bartender. Oh, damn, you just gonna put me out there like that. Damn. That oh, no. That happened, damn. Damn, she put me. <laughs> you actually play me. You see how she do it on live? Man. On live, she just do me like that. Well, because, you know, we do have a friend who is a bartender, and, you know, Big Fat Billy. Shout out to Big Fat Billy. Uh, he's a bartender, and he's super impacted. Like, he went to Amazon to try to get a job to keep, mm. you know, getting financing uh, and coming to his at home. And, you know, Amazon is a huge company that's making billions now. And yeah. it's playing with people, you know, and they're playing with him. So it's like, how shocking is it that people, you know, are trying to find alternatives for their situation and like these major companies are playing with them. And especially those in the service industry who are trying to transition to keep the, the money going because some people can't get unemployment, you know, and, and it just is a reality. So, yeah. Okay. Sorry. I'm off my soapbox. He's not a real bartender. He's the bartender at this bar. <laughs> <laughs> You're up. Hot seat, you're up, I, brother. I don't even know what to say now. I'm just blown away that she just snitched on me like that and just um. Because then people are gonna be like, "Well, what bar? Uh, Fair Hill." Yeah, I, I mean, it's a bar here, you know. I mean, it's a you know. Ask anyway. The question. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, again, huh? I know. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm still a bartender. In some people's eyes. In some people's eyes, but okay. <laughs> back to the serious stuff. The question I have for you, right, is how can we help distribute what you create? Because yeah, like right so now, you know, I know as us as color, you know, we have issues with the distributors. We have issues with moving stuff, you know, people putting barriers in the way. How can we, you know, do a grassroots, you know, just distribution of what you got? So I'm going to explain to you the easiest way, right? Understanding mm -hmm. the dynamic of marketing, this is the way that, things usually are traditionally moved, right? And um, right. people can get their notebooks out because this is, this is literally the blueprint here. Realistically, what is the most known way that 
marketing has always been great through the years, right? What? Word of mouth, right? Word if of mouth. product is good, if your product is good, and if you have a good soul and a good story and a good passion behind it, people are naturally going to speak about one to two things, the product and the experience that they had when they had the product, right? Facts. Now, Facts. the main thing about that is when people remember an experience and then they go to a tasting room or they go to another area and they sit down and they have the same wine or they have something else that's similar to the wine, they're going to remember they're going to remember when they had that wine, right? Or they're going to remember the experience. So, of course, they're going to start talking. My main thing right now, and this happens with all brands, it happens with people as well. People need to stop worrying about the other person being able to get their word out because nobody's going to lose their position. Literally just having a conversation yeah. about these different type of brands are not going to hurt the bottom line of other brands. Absolutely not. You think if I'm speaking yeah. about, um, if I'm speaking about thir uh, uh, the, let me see, let me see a brand that everybody knows. Let's say Yellowtail, right? If I'm talking about mm. Yellowtail to people or Bellinger or, or, or Bottle Nura, do you really think that they need the extra marketing like push? Do you really think my, their, their, their wines need to be in my, in my vernacular right now or even my conversation? No, right? Speak about brands and people that actually resonate with you. If something resonates with you and you feel like you can, you can share that experience with other people about, wow, I had this great experience with this wine. He did it for his father as a passion project and his father loved the color blue. And, you know, my father passed and I had this connection with my father um, sharing this with him or, you know what I mean? There's so many different things. Yeah, that, people, that connection. People need to, yeah, it's a connection. And that's what this world is really determined on is connecting, right? And that's why I, I, I'm so staunch about having people in the industry share their knowledge. Because what's having knowledge and just keeping it? I remember Kanye West, he did the, uh, the not the graduation, but the college dropout. I have all these degrees, oh. all these degrees in a box. Mm. And I'm 70 years old and I'm proud to say I got all these degrees. But what are you doing? It keeps with me degree? warm at night. <laughs> right. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So realistically, you know, it, whether white, whether Asian, whether black, whether Indian, we all need to come together and just connect on many different variations of stories, ideas, and, and connections yes. and network. It doesn't hurt anybody. And at the end of the day, when you deal with good people, karma comes right back around. And when that karma comes yes. back around, you know that you have somebody loyal. You have somebody that's always going to be there to back you. And you have somebody that's going to be always in your forefront if you ever need it. Because God forbid, you know, we're not guaranteed tomorrow. We've seen that with COVID. We see that now, right? Yes. And we've seen it yes. history. So I, I tell people all the time, you know, my brand is my brand. Is my brand. I did it for a passion project for my father. I, I, studied, I studied biochemistry and organic chem. I went over to Spain. I created these, these beautiful harvests to allocate the, uh, the Verdeco that we were utilizing and went to Italy and created this makeshift lab to construct this color that's never been naturally done in food and beverage. And that, that, that alone is like, mm -hmm. it, it, it blows people's mind away. Like what, what kept you going? What resilience kept you going? And realistically, it was just my passion for doing something and not quitting, not quitting yes. and people believing in me. It's just belief. If people believe in you and you have the fire and passion to go and get it, you cannot fail. You know, there's no amount of luck that you need. There's no amount of, of people telling you, oh, you got to do this, got to do this. You do it the way that you do it, and it's going to pan out the way that you feel like you wanted to see it, and it's just going to take shape. Simple as yes. that. You got to hit the applause that's on that one. That's Hell that's yeah. That's yeah. I just feel like you took us to church in a you quick, did. inspirational, <laughs> real yes. way. Yes. And I feel like it's this is communion. Uplifting. Thank you. Right. It's about yeah. uplifting. That's it. Just hey. uplifting. Yes. Right. Right. And, and not understanding and not understanding, mm -hmm. but overstanding. We never want to under mm -hmm. anything. We want to overstand everything. We got to get rid of that word because uh, actually the people CPA told me about that. The play on words are very dangerous. We got to realistically mm -hmm. understand what it is that we're saying and how we're saying it and how individuals are able to take that, right? Go out there yeah, and vote as well. Like, 
Go out there and vote. You know, yes. come on. Like, that's number one, first of all. If you don't like the shape of how the government is structured and how things are being said and how the media is being allocated over certain things, vote. Put your word out there. Yes. Understand how, how these businesses, financial uh, insurance companies are, are, are putting money into these, these, um, these crooked police um, uh, government shifts. You know, just, just think about those things first. Have the conversation, get uncomfortable, and just build off of that, right? Yeah. Rome wasn't yes. built in the day, Man. right? Man, you should they run for office or something. Right, I'll vote for like, you. I'm all about to just write your name on the ballot and just yeah. mail it in. We we feel like you should be running for office. Yeah, well. yeah. Uh oh, can you hear us? It seems oh, like you're. Yeah, we got the we got the circle. We got the right circle. Right thing. Oh, no. uh -oh. Here, here you go. Oh, oh. You're back. Okay. Yeah. Nature almost uh, took no, you. Back. <laughs> Instagram, Instagram shot a shot. Nature was like. <laughs> right. Right. Gotcha. <laughs> Talking too much heavy knowledge. Right, too much real. Right, it, right. Isn't Instagram a product of Facebook? Yeah. Facebook be hating. Well, you know, he gave more money to, to Trump. Right. He be hating. So, <laughs> Where's the camera? This we is see? me. We see each other. Okay. Call me Need Need Leaks, if you will. We uh -huh. see what is that, World War V? She, yeah, she stamped it. She said, yes, run for office. Yes. Okay, Hell so, yeah. you know, I used to run campaigns, too. And, you know, I have some people who we can get, uh, get you on. Okay. Uh oh We're going we to talk about uh -oh. this, Mr. Camellio. Campaign strategist yeah. right here to, to the yeah, right of me. Right. Yeah, you know, <laughs> things happen. Because if not you, then who? If not now, then when? These are exactly. great questions. And, you know, let me, let me say saying. this, too, because I, I think this is super important to, uh, to be said, too. Okay, we got um, two minutes for it. <laughs> absolutely, yes. Because we don't want to um, get it cut off. You get a sure. countdown. Uh, so every, every, every um, white influencer, every white distributor, every white shop owner, um, everybody that's in here right now that is watching this and that is going to see this, I want you to understand that we are not angry. We are not mad. We are frustrated. Right. We're just frustrated. Disappointed. With, yeah, we're disappointed. We're frustrated and we don't know what to do. What you are seeing on the media is not all black people. We are just trying to find a common ground of equality. Realistically, things are going to be said that may make you feel uncomfortable. But promise you this. We love you just as much as we love our Asian counterparts, our black counterparts and our Indian counterparts. It is not against you. We just want understanding to overstand and be able to build and have that, that ideology of eye to eye because we're all human beings, Q-H-U-E, men, and we're all being. So it's all collective. Do not be upset. Do not be mad. Do not be on a defensive. We are just trying to get our point across, and, I, and, and that's, that's, that's pretty much it. I love yeah, everybody. Yeah, and I just I know Man. you got to the tag on with that, and I just want to say. Just run for president yeah. 20. Uh, when, when, when is the president election this, this year? year hey, man, go ahead and, and do that, man. I mean, Come on, man. We need your Biden, help, brother. I mean, I'm going to vote for Biden because I don't want Trump, so I'm going to be real. Um, but Biden, also, I'm going to need his team. Y'all need to get them together. We got a little mm -hmm. circle thing going on with right. Cavellio. Oh, no. That part. Every time he says something that is, like, really impactful, it freezes. Mark Zuckerberg hate on him. It's him. Mark Zuckerberg himself is like freeze his stream. Right. Well, you know what? You can't freeze the on IG Live. Pew, pew, pew. Yep. All right. Well, we'll, 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 he, we'll get him back uh, next time. Um, a lot's happening in the world right now, and we all are feeling away. And to uh, Cavellio's point, you know, we're not mad at white people specifically, but like mm -hmm. this isn't our problem to fix as well, right? We didn't create this. We didn't create the system. We weren't brought here. We were not enslaved. We were not forced into labor. We were not separated from our families. We didn't do any of this, yeah. right? So it is not our problem to fix. It is happening to us. Right. If your child falls, you help them up. Same thing here. We didn't create this problem, but this problem needs to be fixed. Yeah. And you're seeing people saying that your guys are rioting and all these things. It's not us rioting. And to be honest, there may be some, like, for real, for real. But what do you do in communities, right, that don't have fresh fruits and vegetables, that don't have an actual grocery store that actually right, take care of their people, right? Mm -hmm. um, meaning, like, they get expired food or bad food or expires in two days. 
Right. The customer service is you get what you get. You get mistreated and miscounted. You get talked to like you're not a real person. You're not treated with any respect in your own community by other people who do not reflectively look like everybody else there. Right. What do you expect to happen when all of that frustration and disappointment are met? It reaches a boiling point. Like a, like a pot of water is going to do the same thing. I mean, even if you look at, like, here in the D.C. area, right? Yeah, and just keep in mind we got three minutes. I bet. I'm going to keep it real short. <laughs> <laughs> you know, in the D.C. area, where we at right now, we're in southeast D.C., you know, um, east of the river. Uh, we're not near Capitol Hill. So when you go to the grocery stores here, you know, like Renee said, uh, you know, a lot of the food is close to expiration. You get in the store, you're like, damn, it's Tuesday. It expires on Friday. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, how, how can you use that? Um, but when you go into Fairfax County, you know, I was saying Kelly, downtown, um, the quality of food is better. You know, you don't have to worry about looking at the expiration dates because they're good. <laughs> but, but not only <laughs> you know to I mean? that point, like, how hor- horrible is it from two different section points in one city? It's mm-hmm. still one city. Same thing happens at every major city across the country. Right. Chicago, New York, LA, San Francisco, what the has and have not. And unfortunately, it's time for us all to stand together True. because the has may not have as much longer as well. And it's not fair um, for people to consider, you know, what's happening to be a uh, riot because mm-hmm. they're not. And it's not fair for people to put their uh, belief system on others because we all come from different educational advantage points right. and we just need to, like he said, overstand. Just talk to people and don't ask me how I'm doing white people. I'm so sorry that I'm not sorry. I'm not good. And I don't know. I don't know because I have to look at my generations of grandparents and grandparents uh, who are not that distant from slaves. Right. 400 years is not hard to be distant from a slave. Like I'm probably a great grandchild. My great grandparents were probably slaves in the reality of the situation. Mm -hmm. And with that being said, my history is quite different than yours. My understanding in life, my DNA, my, my fears, they're all different. I can't walk down the street the same way as you. I work in a place where I'm the only black person. I've been in classrooms the majority of my life where I'm the only black person. These issues are real that we have. And we never put them on you. We mm-hmm. never do. What do we do? We code switch to make you comfortable. So now it's time for you to understand your uncomfortability and all that we do to make your lives easy. We're just not asking you to get it and be like, oh, it's a time, you know, things happen, you know, George Floyd. It's not about just George Floyd. It's about the hundreds of thousands of black people who were innocently murdered. Mm -hmm. It's about our ancestors who were murdered, enslaved. So we just want to take this moment to just really let that sink into people and understand that this hurts more than anything. And we don't know what to do, but it's not our problem to figure out. Your last words? (laughs) No, I mean, you wrapped it up. I mean, you know. We just got to find um, creative and innovative ways to protect ourselves and build wealth within our communities. Um, you know, so I think we spoke to a lot of um, brilliant, big brained folks on this show today that can really be instrumental in uh, getting us on the right track. Yeah. yeah. And just so everyone knows that this is the 99th year that Oklahoma's uh, bombings occurred on Black Wall Street. So history has a reason and season of re-showing itself uh, for different purposes for different people. I um, want to thank all of our guests today, all black business owners, and we're so ecstatic that they're so amazing and so dope. Um, I see Jam Sessions is in here, too. Follow her. Big Fat Billy, follow him. Uh, Amor Geneve, follow him. Uh, the People's CPA, follow her. And, of course, the most amazing Lafette Rose, follow them today. Uh, we're just so, oh, yay, there goes, okay, here we are. Um, we are just so excited uh, to be here and share these moments with you. Check us out on Sunday for Soulful Sundays 
on Wednesdays, our podcast drops, and we have new episodes. This past Wednesday, we had Courtney Seard and Greg Bustos of Wonder and Grace Jose. Uh, we will see you guys next week. Thursdays at 6.30. Pew, pew, pew. See y'all later. Thanks hey. for joining.